Alrighty, so we already talked about uh, parts of the ukulele. We numbered our fingers, so let's talk about tuning. So a soprano ukulele has four strings. Each string is tuned to a different note. So at least in the beginning, we'll start off with the fourth string, which is the one that's closest to the ceiling. So tuning is making sure that this note aligns with the note that we want on the tuning uh, mechanism there. I'm gonna stop talking for just a little bit because you can see that the tuner picks up on my voice. So I'm just gonna hit this string right here. So that's a G note. So how notes work and how tuning works is that if you're too low, you need to tighten the, the nut in the, um, in the ukulele to raise up the note and how notes works uh, work is they go from A, B, C, D, E, F, G without counting the, the, the sharps right now. So let's say you're playing that this string, but let's say we're not in tune. And let's say we're sure in E. So if we have an E there, we actually have to go higher because it goes E, F, G. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this. And, and tuning the peg into the, into the ukulele raises up. The note there until I have it where I want it. So let's do that uh, on your own side with all the other strings as well. So I'm gonna keep going. So I'm gonna hit the third string and that one is, I can annotate it, which is cool. So this third string is the one that is the thickest string that we have in the ukulele. So I'll do something different. Let's say we're too high and we get a D. So since we don't want to go up, 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 because that will have way too much tension and it might break the string, we need to go lower because we need to go from D to C. So I'm going to go down. And kind of like a little quick tip is if you're tuning down, go down a little bit more and then go up again. Just because if we tune down to where we want it to be, there's not a lot of tension that's keeping that string there in tune and it might tend to, uh, to lose tension uh, in a little bit. So always uh, tune down and then up or always up to where you want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the other one. So second string is this one right here. Let me draw on it because we have these fancy tools. The second string there is that E string. So same thing, it's a little low. So let me go a little high. And it looks like we have it in the right place. So let's go ahead and finish off with A which is the one that's closest to the ground and the highest sounding string. So let me hit it one more time. And look at that. It's like I tuned it before we started this. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so this point, uh, this is open to any questions that you have um, in regards to tuning. You always wanna tune before you start playing or it's gonna sound a little wonky or a little out of place. Um, you'll get accustomed to hearing it too, but uh, a fully tuned ukulele will sound like this. And we'll have this nice tone in relation with, with all the rest of the strings. And while people might be um, 
typing questions or thinking of questions, I'll just talk about another way of tuning, mm -hmm. which is a physical tuner. Um, they tend to have clips. Not all of them do, um, but these ones with clips can go right onto the headstock and then turn that on. You can see there, it, it will read that way. Um, the reason why you might want a physical tuner like this is um, if you're playing live with other people, because it only picks up the, it doesn't pick up the sound of the room, it just picks up the vibration of your instrument. Um, right now, a lot of people are indoors just playing music by themselves, so maybe not the biggest consideration, um, but it is an option that's out there. Uh, let's see. I don't see any questions, but do you want to talk about different, because the one you have looks a little bit different than the one that I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I actually brought two instruments. So um, the first one is technically a ukulele. Um, it is an eight string ukulele um, and it's baritone, meaning it's lower. So this is kind of like the high four strings of a guitar. It's pitched that way. So that would be a G chord if you're a guitar player. Um, C chord. Um, but since I'm playing with ukulele players, I have a capo. And I put it up at the fifth fret, like so. And now I'm pitched like a normal ukulele, more or less. Um, the only thing that's different is with a normal ukulele, you just have um, at high um, G string. This is actually my lowest note, not one of the higher ones. So that's something that's different. Um, I also brought another double stringed instrument. This is a chorongo. It's from Peru. Um, courtesy of Freddie, um, and it's tuned a lot like a ukulele. So um, these strings here, these four pairs, um, are tuned almost exactly like a ukulele. It's just the one closest to the ground is identical to the middle pair, like that. So a lot of the chord shapes are the same or very, very similar. So like a C chord is exactly the same with the Toronto as with the ukulele. And I don't need to um, do any capoing or anything to get at the same uh, pitch. Alrighty, so no questions about um, tuning. So I'm gonna assume that everybody's perfectly in tuned. So let's go on right ahead with uh, chords. So let me share this as well. I also shared it in the uh, email message that everybody got, but let me just put it in the chat one more time. If it will load up. Let's see. There we go. Perfect. Alrighty. So now that we have our strings, we know how to uh, number our fingers. Let's go ahead and kind of talk about chords. So with any song, chords are basically the, the steps that you take from going from one place to another in the most simplest way. So in order to play music in general or in string instruments, we have to learn chords so that we know what thing we're playing in what particular section. I want to try to explain it the simplest way as possible. Um, so let's say we want to learn how to read this right here. So let me go ahead and write on this one that I want everybody to pay attention to. So we have this C chord right here. So we have a couple of things to keep in mind. So it looks like we have four strings or four lines going down. So that looks like it's a ukulele line right there. This very first one is the first string that we have. So then it goes to the second string, third string, and fourth string right there. 
So this very first one is our first string. And then we have these boxes here that are our frets. So there is fret number one, fret number two, fret number three, and so on. So one thing that I want to kind of show you is this little black dot here, and you can kind of see it. So I'll go ahead and, and that be a number um, three, actually. I'll make that a little bigger. So this three right here represents the number finger that we're going to fret it with. So I want everybody to take their ring finger. We're going to put it in the third fret of the first string. So how that looks like is something like this. So we have the first, second, and third. So that is our, what a fretted third string, uh, third first string on the third fret looks like. So we want to have a ring finger there. And so we have that. We don't want to put anything else on these strings, any finger. So this is the only one that should be touching the fretboard. So once we have that, then we can go ahead and run our fingers here, down, uh, up to down, one by one, to make sure that everything sounds uh, clean. So let's go ahead. Making sure that it's a bright, not a little rough sound. So once we have that one, two, three, four, very clear, then we can run our thumbs to the side on one solid motion. And it will create this kind of nice unison sound with everything. Alrighty. So that is the C chord. We have this C here on the top. So this indicates the, uh, the name of the chord that we're playing. So this will be the simplest chord that you will do because it only includes one finger, but as you can see, other ones include other fingers as well. So since we learned how to have our finger there on the C, uh, C chord with our third finger, let's go ahead and go down to this A minor here. So this one looks a little bit different than the other one. First, we have nothing here on the first, second, and third string. But as soon as we get to the fourth string, we have this black dot in the second fret and a number two. So what this means is that we're gonna take our second finger, our middle finger, and we're gonna press it down in the fret in the second fret of the fourth string, the very last one. So this will be kind of the other opposite way. And you want to press down your finger so that it's kind of, let me do an indentation here. So it's kind of right below the fingernail. And in terms of hand placement, I kind of like to keep my thumb hugging slightly at the back of the guitar neck so that it have this kind of easy grip because you'll you'll realize that it doesn't take a lot of pressure to press down the string so you can even uh, toy around with leaving pressure and you'll realize that the note will still stay so like any new chord we're gonna go one by one down and as soon as we have those nice three four notes then we can just brush it down quickly and it will sound like that. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure how is everybody doing? Uh, if you have any questions right now on those first two, so that we can answer those, if that makes sense about the lines, the frets, and the black dots that represents our fingers there. Alrighty, I'm going to assume that's a good to go. So let's talk about chords that only, not only just have one finger, but two fingers. 
So let's go ahead and draw our attention to this F chord here. I forgot to mention too that with guitar chords, uh, we have majors and minors, or very simplistically put, happy chords and sad chords. So we have the F here, and you can see that it doesn't have a, a lowercase m. So this means that it's a, uh, <clears throat> a major chord. This little m's here signify that there are minor chords. So let's say that we had our A minor. You can see that it's a little, not terribly sad, but you know, it's not, it's an okay chord. But if let's say we do that F, it, it does bring it up a little bit, the, the feeling of it. So I just wanted to kind of go over that quickly. Uh, but in terms of playing this F chord, you can see that there are already some similarities. This two is the same two as that A minor. So we can just leave that finger right there. And the only addition is that first um, fret there with our first finger and the first fret. So what we wanna do is since we already have our second finger right there, we wanna put our index finger on the second fret of the second string. So you'll kind of see that we have one string that's played, one string that's not played that we're skipping or that we're fretting actually. We have that one uh, string there that's being fretted and then our first string has nothing uh, guarding it. This is also good though, because now we're gonna start realizing that our fingers can sometimes get in the way of playing chords. So that's why I have my little kind of arc going on so that I don't um, press or hit other strings with my fingers up here. But that's why we have a nice little arc going there. So anytime that we have that new chord, we go, go ahead and go just to make sure that um, all the strings are being played uh, brightly, no clinkiness, uh, nothing like that. Alrighty. Let me erase that real quick and we're gonna go ahead and go to this A here. And we'll notice some very similar things between this A and the F and the A minor. And this is a chord right there. So you can see that this, uh, all these three chords actually share a lot of things in common with each other. So we have that two there, that two there, and that two there. So how we play that A is we, again, we still keep that second finger on the second fret of the fourth string, but now instead of having our index finger on the second string on the first fret, now we just move it up one and have that on the third string of the first fret. So you can see that it's, we don't move around the, this finger, but we move around this finger. Alrighty, so let me clear all there. So at this moment, uh, I kind of want you to look at this chart and choose one chord that you want to give a try. I'm gonna skip these ones for right now, but I want you to choose something different here and just kind of give it a try and see how that goes. Um, gonna search something real quick. So please put in the chat if something is a little off. Gonna see too if we can do some quick 
things right here. No. Okay. But it'll give everybody. I notice in that um, that chord chart that sometimes one finger will do more than one. So um, those are called, well, not all. But some of them are called bar chords. Um, so like there was D minor that was listed that had three ones and kind of a little parentheses uh, right next to it. Um, you can do that by putting um, your finger right there. So the, the B minor, it's the B and then the small m uh, right beneath the D chord. Um, you can see the three ones right there. Same with the C minor, it's the same, just moved up. So that's what that means. You're just using your whole finger. Alrighty, so let's just keep going on ahead. And remember, we will have this later on so you can view it over uh, on our YouTube page. And there's a lot of other similar ones that we ever recorded and that are available on YouTube too if you get stuck. Um, but let's talk about strumming. As we've been talking a little bit just about this side and not really what's happening on this side. So it's like you can't have I'm trying to make, like, what's the point of a pie if you don't have a fork? That sounds terrible. But anyways, you, these two things complement each other. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about strumming. So um, this is a strumming chart, and I'm going to share it also in the chat here um, so that you can view it as well and download it. And I'm going to let Dan take the lead on this one right here. So um, I don't want to belabor Freddie's analogy too much about the pie and the fork. Um, but let's say our pie is a C chord. So we've gone over that. It's just the, um, the third finger on the third fret of the first string, like that. So that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, for these strumming patterns, just to keep it simple, just use one finger on your left hand, and now we're going to concentrate on the fork, right hand. So um, you can see the first example it says all downbeats, single strum. What we're going to be doing is be going down, 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 down. That's what those Ds are beneath the numbers. Um, and you can see the numbers are one through four. Um, a lot of music is in four, four. It's called common time because of that. Um, so we'll be counting one, two, three, four. And each time we're gonna go down with each beat. So again, the C chord. And then you can see in the next example, um, it says double strum. And you'll notice that there's a second letter there uh, in addition to D, and that's U. So the D is down, the U is up. Um, and you'll also see in between the numbers um, are little pluses. So instead of going one, two, three, four, we're going to be going one and two and three and four and. And we're still gonna go down on all the numbers, but we're gonna go up on the ands. So one and two and three and four and. So now let's do that with that C chord again. So down, up, down, up, down, down. And I'm just using my thumb, um, not very well in that example. Um, 
if you're strumming, you might use just one finger, you might use your thumb, you might use your index, your middle finger, you might use a pick as well, uh, which I forgot to bring up as an example. But if I'm using a finger, it'd be down, So that's the basics of how to read this. Um, as you can see, it does get a little bit more complicated. Um, let's see what sh what's a good next example, Freddie, that we should. I think um, let's do five, just because there's the Number emphasis, five. and then we can do the Latin strum, or it's also called, or it's very similar to uh, uh, ukulele style strumming. Okay, so number five. So emphasize the one downbeat. So that means you're going to hit it a little harder on the one, um, and that for then, and then the rest of the letters in that bar um, are lowercase. So we're going to be going down for a full beat, and then down, up, down, up, down, up. So again, the C chord. One, two, and three, and four, and down, down, up, down, up, down, up. One, two, and three, and four, and down, down, up, down, up, down, up. But if we're going to be playing that with the emphasis on the one, again, we're going to hit it a little bit harder. That's called, well, emphasis or an accent. Um, you'll also hear that. So, um, so that's more up to speed um, and with the accent on, on the one. I'm also yes. going to use my tuner because I sound out of tune now. Yes, a lot of it too is, uh, it might not sound too much, uh, at least in the beginning, because you're learning and you, the important thing is to at least get it right, and then you can pick up the, the speed of it. Uh, one of the things too that I kind of want to go back to in the beginning is that sometimes we just don't want to stay on, on, a, on a C chord for... I don't know, five minutes, because that doesn't seem too exciting to me. So kind of how music and bars work is, let's see, I, let's say I play that C for one bar, which is one, two, three, four, and another bar, which is that other one, two, three, four. So these two would be two bars with my writing here in my mouse. And this right here, this little section I would consider one bar. So each time there is these kind of rectangles, that's called one bar, two bars, three bars, and four bars. So let's say I'm playing a song and I have, uh, let's go up a little bit. So let's say I have my C right here. So I, I'm gonna play this C for two bars and then my A minor for two bars, which is, let me go back to this one here. Uh, A minor again is the other, kind of the opposite way of the C, where it's also just one note there. So to keep it interesting, you wanna have kind of always going before, back and forth between two uh, chords. So for example, that first one would be, um, Put a nice single there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the next time I have to do one, my finger should already be here and go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. After that fourth one, switch again to one, two, three, four. Switch. One, two, three, four, switch. One, two, three, four, one bar. One, two, three, four, two bars, switch.
and so on. So you can practice, um, so you can learn a little bit better too about this. I would focus on the C and A minor just because they're a little easier to uh, bounce off each other. So let's say I have, I'm doing the same thing with uh, C and A minor, but that on that emphasis. So let's say C here and I'm doing also A minor. So I'm gonna do C for, oh, it's, it stays there with you, that's great. So let's do C for two bars. Again, that's this two whole bars here, the middle part, the half part, and then I'm gonna switch to that A minor for the other one. So it'd be one and two and three and four and one. And switch one and way slower this time. One and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and... This is kind of where some of the trickiness comes into play, just because as soon as I hit that up, by the time I go down with my strumming hand, I already need to be in that new position. But most of the people recognize the um, that Latin strum here too. So let's do the example again with C. Uh, I'll do. I'll just stay with C, and then I'll do C and A minor. So that's why it's also important to realize the emphasis or the hard strums, just because it brings a little more kick to some parts and knows where kind of the beginning of the rhythm is. So for example, that C for uh, in the Latin strum would sound this like this, just a little slower. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Anytime that you're learning these new um, strumming patterns, remember to say out loud one and two and three and four and because we might speed up or slow down when there's nothing. So if I were to do that without saying anything, it would be, it would sound a little off. That's why a lot of these emphasis and empty spaces really let the, the strumming and the rhythm breathe for a second so that it creates a different feeling. But if we're doing that a little faster with just C, it would just be. Which sounds a little more exciting than, <laughs> than the other one. But again, it's practice, 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 practice that will accomplish that. And it's always important to, to take your time to do so and really Keep, keep up um, the, the pace in your head and, and say it out loud uh, in terms of that. <laughs> Let's see. And especially too, since you're just learning how to work your thumb differently than, and also with your other hands too, that's before they weren't doing on a regular basis, so. It's always about learning how your thumb works and the way that you're, when you're pressing down, make sure you have the same power or force on all the strings so that one string doesn't, or they dig in into each other. That doesn't sound kind of nice. Um, one of the things for me, at least personally, when I'm doing the, my up strums is I'll just do, I'll strum just the first two or three strings, mostly first two just because it, it gives it a little nice, not heavy heaviness. If we were to do this, it would sound a little full. So that's why I like to do just hitting these first two. Um, anything you wanted to add, Dan? Um, 
Not necessarily, just to um, reinforce the things. Um, the bar, you might also call it a measure, um, just different terms for the same things. And that just means you start over the count again. It's a place where a change happens. Um, and just kind of goes in cycles, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's two bars of four beats. Um, and while well, Freddie said, um, you know, having an even pressure, um, that, that's true except for where you, you do the accented or the emphasized beats. You, it'd be an even pressure against all the strings still, but the, the strum itself, would be stronger than the other strums. Alrighty, any questions on how to read this um, uh, strumming pattern? I put it again in the chats and on the email so that everybody can save it and, and play with it. And of course, um, this particular strumming pattern is just one, two, three, four, but there's many, many different ways to count music especially at least four four one two three four you can go into the radio or almost any song and you can count it you can you can start to take note too when you listen to music you can count oh they're one two three four and then they change one two three four uh so once next time you're listening to music you can start visualizing oh th this is like where they clap and they're actually clapping on the one two three four Understanding this too is important because once you're playing with other people, then you're starting to communicate better because you're starting to learn the language of time and rhythm. Got a question. Can you play a simple song using the C and A minor chord so that we can hear what they sound like in a short song? Welcome to um, my next section. <laughs> <laughs> so of course we have chords, and now we have rhythm. So where do the songs fit in? So I always say that learn songs or think of songs that you want to learn because that way they'll stick better with you because nobody wants to learn songs that you don't want to hear or practice. So uh, this is also the opportunity to say everybody has uh, my email. So if there's any particular artist or a song that you want to do, you can email uh, me and Dan. Uh, you can just email me and I'll forward it to Dan. And we can start looking up kind of simple songs that you can do. Uh, but I want to go ahead and show you this website that I always um, tell people to go because this is a great website. And I apologize for any ads to that come up. Um, so ultimateguitar.com is a website that is user generated for guitar and ukulele chords and songs. So what this means is that people here have inputted uh, chords for songs. So let's uh, go ahead and we can search a song that we want to do, uh, that we want to learn. So let's just say we want to learn Hallelujah here. One of the nice parts about this is that it kind of works like a social media where there's different ratings and types of files here. And we also have this nice little tab page here. Uh, so we have official chords, tabs, guitar pro, power, bass, video, and look at that, ukulele. That's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead down here and Let's talk about these things right here. So these are kind of different versions or different people's submissions to the song. And since it's a Hello is a very popular song by Larry Cohen, there's also the Jeff Buckley version as well. So it, depending on which version you want to learn, this is also to keep in mind which artist was the one that, um, which interpretation is. Uh, but let's go with Jeff Buckley's and we can see that this one has particularly 4,000 stars. So I want to say that this is going to be a great um, file for us to learn. And I also go ahead because this song starts with A, with C and A minor. And one of the nice things too about this is that it's that 
it also tells you the strumming pattern for that particular song. So let me go ahead and share my computer sound. Oh, where did it go? It also has the chord shapes right there. The chord shapes. Uh, no, there we go. So let me play this real quick. Let it you know here that this is on three so it's actually one one e and what it's uh what is it then uh, the way i count it is one two three two two three three two three four two three or sometimes people do one triplet three uh two triplet three triplet but it's it's at least okay not to know too much terminology because you can hear it and see that at the first strum is down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. And you can practice it too without having the chords here. It just go down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. So for this particular example, we have this intro here. So with this particular song, it's actually two bars or half bars. So in the beginning, it would be, I'm just going to do very slowly, C for only one bar. So it'd be two bars, actually. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to that A minor. And then back again to that C. And that's the basic rhythm that goes through the entire song. So I'm going to go quickly here into all these kind of changes and verses. Uh, one of the things that I do like to point out about uh, here too, if there might be some chords that you don't know, and this website will let you know where to place those uh, fingers if you haven't learned that chord before. So it will look very similar to what we have already. But since this is a kind of tinier view, I like to hover over here. And it's still tiny. I think they just might have switched their website. But you can tell that A minor and the very faint uh, frets right there. So this actually might be a better example there. And always, if you don't know a chord, you can always Google E7 ukulele chord. And a lot of images will pop up about uh, how to properly fret that. But let me go through the first verse real quick. So it would be I heard the David play and then F So at least for this particular song, it's it goes one chord twice, da 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 da, switches, da 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 switches. So that's kind of the the thing with ukuleles and strumming patterns that each song will basically have its own particular set of, oh, this is how you go here, and this is how you're supposed to do here or there. Um, I'll also uh, point out. Uh, sorry, Freddie. Um, with the C chord, the way that they notate it is a little bit different from what we did. So it says, it almost looks like you're doing this, but it says 3FR. FR means fret. So it still is telling you to do um, a finger, your first finger on the third fret of the first string. Um, but it, it, it looks like that. If you aren't reading that FR carefully. Um, and you might see that on other songs on this website too, where you'll be playing, it'll show you it at a different place on the neck like that. Uh, so for example, let's just go to the Leonard Cohen ones real quick. And there might be under a different total key. So this one is F uh, to D minor. So there's always gonna be different versions 
uh, especially when you hear them to a song, so you'll see, oh, that's not exactly how it's sounding because it's on a, for simpler terms, on a different way that they're singing or uh, playing the music that it doesn't. Because I think Leonard Cohen's voice too is lower, so they're gonna um, put the key at a lower one. Uh, any questions on gu Ultimate Guitar? I strongly recommend this website just because, again, it's free and it is user generated. So people, especially with musicians, are constantly updating it with new songs and new editions. Uh, and what's also cool is if you go on one of those, let's maybe go back to that Leonard Cohen one. And there's a transpose. Oh, yes. So you can, if you're like trying to sing along and the key doesn't work for you, you can put it into a different key by doing that transpose up or down. And it will automatically change the chords for you. I transposed it and it gave me the same chords to the uh, Jeff Buckley version mm -hmm. too. So it went seven higher. It might have actually been lower. So this might be if you want to do your own interpretation of a song and your voice isn't quite right for it, then you can play around and see which one sounds uh, better for you. Uh, one of the last things too, now that our hour is up, I want to point out our Sonoma County uh, Overdrive page, which is for our electronic uh, eBooks. And we added a bunch of ukulele uh, eBooks. So there's different styles, of course, of ukulele to play and books relating to it. So I'll add that as well in the chat so you can take a look too if you like. But uh, I think at least with all the information that we've given you, it's a lot to take in. So just remember to take your time, uh, practice uh, switching between different chords, even without doing anything here, because then ultimately you're you're learning muscle memory about where fingers go faster. And uh, we are doing curbside pickup now, so you can get physical items as well. Um, and we're doing it at all the branches. So um, if you want to put a, a ukulele book on hold, uh, we got plenty of those too. Uh, we have a lot of stuff there. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff, yeah. Alrighty. Uh, before we head out, we want to thank everybody for joining us and participating in this new setting and format. I uh, wish we could see all your beautiful faces, but this is pretty good too. And I hope you um, get a lot of this workshop. Uh, we will be putting it again, hopefully by the early next week, into our YouTube page. So you can have this too as a reference and you can um, go back to it at any time. Uh, so this would be a last section for last questions that you had. And you can always email us too if you think of something afterwards. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> All righty. Uh, one more minute, just in case. Okay, looks pretty good. All righty. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. And like last time, uh, please register uh, on our website so you can get the link to the next uh, ukulele session. And you'll receive it again 30 or so minutes before um, the actual session. But I'm always looking just to make sure that if anybody uh, signed up at the last minute. Uh, but thank you, everybody. Hope everybody has a good one. <laughs>